I'm gonna give it a break. Just a quick video. I'm gonna make myself some tea, chaga cedar tea. Sharpen a knife I just got uh, yesterday. And uh, just gonna enjoy myself because right now she's cool. Uh, this morning it's uh, 2 Celsius, which is 35 Fahrenheit. And she's a cool morning. So, I figured why not have some tea <laughs> and sharpen the blade. Okay, so I'm going to use my uh, MSR Pocket Rocket, the original one. Make sure it's off. Grab some chaga. Just a nice little handful for now. And then throw in some cedar. And throw in a little bit more. Get this thing going. If you hear some noise in the background, I got my propane lights on and I got some butane lamps going because she's dark. All right. Cup ready. All right. So right now, this is the knife that I just received uh, in the mail yesterday. It's definitely not new, but it's in very good shape. Now, when I received it, I was trying to cut some paper. She cuts. Okay, but there's a little bit of a burr on it. I can't feel it, but the paper tells me so. Now, if I just grab plain old everyday printer paper. Yeah, a little, little bit here. Just uh, it's catching a little bit at, at the base here and a little bit at the end here. Right there. somewhat sharp, but not the way I like it. So all I'm going to start off with is I'm going to do a little bit of light scropping. I got a nice piece of leather with some compound on it. Okay, this, this leather here is probably six ounce leather. This one here, I believe it's seven. That's yeah, about a seven ounce leather, but I'll, I'll just uh, 
do a little stropping while I get my tea going. Let's crank that baby out. So whenever you're stropping, um, you can either use a ceramic just to give you your edge back, because the knife is sharp, there's no doubt about it. So all I want to do is get my edge back, okay? So yes, you can use a ceramic and just bring it into you. Keep your angle, make sure you got your angle on and just draw it towards you. Turn it around. Just give it a couple passes. And I like stropping myself. Get that edge back on. Enjoy the tea. Also, I'm getting my garden ready for the winter. Now that we're going to start to get some real cold temperatures. Uh, been raking up all my leaves and placing it out on the garden. Especially uh, where all my garlic is eh? and my strawberries. Put them all in the strawberries. Put them all in the garlic. And the main part of the garden, there's nothing in there yet, but whatever I had left over for leaves, I, I just threw in there so next year I can uh, till it in. Um, it's, it's been windy like crazy, so the leaves are blowing all over the place. So just before the snow falls, I'll rake it all up again and uh, re redistribute it on the garden. Uh, I'll show that uh, right now. Okay, so just preparing for a harsh winter and uh, we took all our maple leaves and we put about, oh God, I don't know, 15 inches of uh, leaves on top of the uh, strawberry patch. That should uh, insulate it pretty good. But uh, it's still windy, so every couple of days we'll rake it up and throw it back on top. The garlic bed, totally covered. I have probably 14 inches of leaves on top of my garlic. That should insulate them pretty good for the harsh winter. All right, so just do some light stropping. already it's already getting a shine on it doesn't take much eh? like if you don't let your knife get dull 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 and if you strop it keep a leather with you or a ceramic rod with you and every day just touch it up your knife will stay sharp for a long time this is just Maintenance, eh? so, I also went uh, archery hunting a few weeks back there and uh, it was uh, it was interesting um, where I was I seen a lot of deer <laughs> but I'm very accurate up to 40 yards I'll push 45, no problem, because that's where I practice at. Um, but I won't take a chance of going outside of 45 yards. And uh, basically, a lot of the deer were sitting right at the 65, 60 yards, 70 yards. And that, that's as close as they came. And then, there was a finicky uh, buck, a small buck, and he was nervous, nervous, nervous like crazy. And uh, it was, it was fun. Then he, then he circled around and started coming towards me, and 
I'll show you the video right here. Okay, so yeah, that's what happened. It was pretty cool. But also, I was getting a lot of deer coming out. Lots and lots of deer coming out.
there's a nice, nice eight pointer that came out. Oh, he was nice. He came out. First, I seen the does. There's uh, two does that came out. Then the eight pointer came out. And I was watching him come across. And then all of a sudden, another six pointer came out. That was, that was nice to see. Very nice sized deer. Didn't have a clue I was there whatsoever, which was very nice. The wind was perfect, perfect in my face. And they came out in front of me, so that was good. And I watched them right till dark. And they just played around the 65, 70 yard line. That's all they did. Shut that off. They, they, they did not come any closer. They never knew I was there. Then, uh, when some of the fellas in the group pulled the pin because it was getting late and started making their way back to the vehicle, the deer kind of just looked up at him in, that, in their direction and then just slowly walked towards the end of the bush, crossed the ditch, and I could see them into the bush. They, they weren't excited at all because we are working on a... Uh, we are we are hunting on a working farm and the farmer's there all the time he's got his excavators going he's got all his machinery he's plowing he's, he's doing his everyday chores and the deer don't seem bothered about it so as long as you're quiet and just sit there and watch they're going to come out. And that's where I got my nice big buck two years ago. That 10-pointer was right there. Same spot. I was kind of looking forward to harvesting that 8. Because that was a very nice 8. But I will be going back. It's archery season. Our rifle season is not until the uh, third Monday of November. But I will be going back for archery. But yeah, I'll, I'll show you some more footage. Raining. It's been raining all day. So we'll see what happens. Now that everything's wet, it's going to be quiet here in the, the deer anyways. So we really got to pay attention to our eyes. It's supposed to rain like this all night. I don't see the farmer. So maybe he uh, didn't come out today. Yep, gonna get wet. Pretty cool, eh? All right, let's pour some tea. See the nice color. Very rich, very nice. Great little pot, nice and small. Perfect for two cups of tea. Nice and cold now.
it's just really, you really pick up the flavor of the cedar, that's for sure. Very, very nice. We uh, have all our game cameras out. Lots of nice bucks. A couple daytime shots, but lots of them are at night. But hopefully they stick around and and we see them in uh, the third week of November. I do harvest one I'm gonna can it the whole thing um, I think I think it'll be better we have we, we have some deer from last year still in the freezer but I want to can I want to can this I want to make a I want to make a light gravy cut it all into cubes and then uh, I want to fill my jars, put them in a canner, and put them on the shelf. That way, if we're ever making a, a stir fry, or if we're going to make a, a, a soup base, or chili, or whatever, we'll just use that, hey, save all the room in the freezer. So that'll be another video. A little maintenance goes a long ways. You know something? You should think about uh, picking yourself up some uh, older Mora knives. They're they're excellent, excellent knives. I'm telling you, very very nice knives. In the kitchen, I use my little one all the time. I got that thing so sharp, so nice. It just cuts the vegetables, cuts everything so so nice. Like it's it's a great workhorse, I'll tell you. This is a nice size one here also. And you will not be sorry. Pick that up on eBay. This one here. Thirty two dollars Canadian. Delivered to my doorstep. Thirty two dollars. And it, look at the shape that's in. But that's thirty-two dollars. I'm telling you, for a knife of this quality, that's pretty nice. So, anyways, I'm going to enjoy my tea. Once it starts warming up outside, <laughs> I'll continue with my yard work and trying to winterize my whole entire yard. Mm. I've got to put everything away. Mm. That's nice. Uh, make sure everything's locked up, all the patio furniture, put everything, store everything for the winter. Then i got to uh, work on my snow blower, get that up and running. Um, it's, it's never ending. There's always something to do. But anyways, I'm going to enjoy my tea. Thank you very much guys for dropping by. And, uh, it's well appreciated. Always in your spare time, if you, if you think about it, take out some knives, go over it with a leather straw. All right. Like. Look at the discoloration on here. Just cleaning up the edge of the blade, you know? And it works great. If you don't believe in leather, well then, ceramic. All right, 
and then this one here is a nice little sharpener because it even has its own uh, strop on it. So you can just use the one one sharpening tool for everything, you know. You got your leather, you got your ceramic, and that's a nice little work sharp. It's coarse and fine, extra fine. Now it cuts nice. Now I'm happy with that. That's a nice sharp knife. It's not overly crazy. But for printer paper, cuts really good. So anyways, look at the older type knives. Vintage Moras, Ericsson, Frost, uh, there, there, there's so many out there, you know, but don't be shy, give it a shot, you know what I mean, <laughs> this is a great buy, so anyways, thanks for dropping by there guys, take care, don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and we'll see you at the next video. Bye now.